Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to Open Mic here on the John Campy YouTube channel. Uh, the, the show where all we do, it's much more laid back, relaxed. We just take your comments and questions because it is an open mic and the mic is all yours. Although I'm joined by Mr. Robert Meyer Burnett and, and Robert today, today is a day that wow. will go down in history of the comic book movie genre as the earth has shook, the heavens have quaked. The seas have boiled as it has now been announced that New Mutants 2 will get... No, that's not what we're, we're, we're here to talk about. Uh, we're here to talk about a little something else. But Rob, uh, how are you doing this afternoon? Uh, you know, John, I was I, I, I got back in here and I thought, ah, oh, we'll do an open mic at 3 o'clock. Not much is going on. And Taylor pops up with this, wait a minute. And then suddenly, the world changed, John. The, the seismic shift in the space-time continuum dare I say the multiverse has happened. It's, it's, it's incredible. For those of you who have not heard the news, let's we'll just get right to it here. It is now official. Ryan Reynolds got on uh, social media, put out a video that he and Hugh Jackman obviously uh, put together themselves. Beautifully produced, by the Beautifully way. Beautifully produced. Wonderful thing, as they often do. And announced that Hugh Jackman is indeed coming back to play Wolverine one more time in Deadpool 3. Now, I'm sure many of you probably looked at that a little, little bit half crooked and say, mm, is he being serious? As I'm, listen, I'll be honest you with you. We were like that. We were like that too. Like watching this and it's like, okay, uh, is this serious? But then the official Marvel logo came out and then about 30 seconds after that, Variety was obviously made aware of this. Variety dropped their story immediately after that, uh, like 30 seconds after that thing dropped, that Hugh Jackman is back as Wolverine in Deadpool 3 with Ryan Reynolds coming September 6th, 2024. So less than two years from now, we will finally have Deadpool 3. The, the idea of Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine one more time in a Deadpool film, this has been something that's been talked about a lot. We've been speculated a lot. Uh, there have been times that we said, yeah, any minute now they're going to announce this. And then moments we thought, well, nah, maybe this isn't going to happen now. But you go back, the best thing on the internet the last number of years, the best thing in all the internet has been the faux feud between Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. Like the, the fake feud between the two of them online has been totally worth the exist it, it, it itself justifies the existence of twitter and it justifies the existence of social media their back and forth online over the years has never gotten tired it's always been brilliant and then uh, a couple of years ago this this one was a great thing that they did with jake gyllenhaal i remember this where they literally told ryan reynolds that oh yeah it's an ugly christmas christmas sweater party uh, but they were totally lying and ryan showed up in an ugly christmas sweater part uh sweater but anyway go back a couple of years now and let's see how fast you guys can pull up an image of this. But Hugh Jackman did some kind of a video from New York. He was in a hotel room. Yeah. And you remember this? Yep. And and you see over his shoulder, Ryan Reynolds in the Deadpool suit, literally laying in the bed behind him. And that, and we, we thought at the time, and as it turns out it was, we thought that is probably a foreshadowing of something to come. I mean, you, you can't do that. And of course, Hugh Jackman's appearance. Yeah, there's there's that video. We all remember when that video got done. That was hilarious. And of course, you know, Deadpool constantly referenced Hugh Jackman. You know, the one when they took off the one mask and he had another mask under it with Hugh Jackman's face put on it. I mean, this is... Rob, I will go so far as to say this. This is the announcement that I would say that other than maybe... Toby and Andrew showing up in Spider-Man. This will be the most anticipated thing ever in comic book movies. Like as far as a one spot, quick splash announcement, like me, I mean, obviously you say like an Avengers movie is getting made. That's fine. We knew Deadpool 3 was coming, but the official announcement that Hugh Jackman, this is something the fans have been wanting to see since the first Deadpool movie. And it's been percolating, like you said, for years. Yeah. And we haven't really had time to process this. I mean, this is, this is insane. This is huge. And and Rob, like I before I keep droning on and on, give me your first impressions on this. Well, first of all, the, the Marvel Studios branding, when I saw that at the end, because we were watching it going, I wonder if there's going to be Marvel Studios branding. The fact that it's there, there's a lot of empty slots 
in the MCU list of movies being released 2024. A lot of empty slots. We were speculating today, what does it mean for mutants in the MCU? I mean, you know, you you have the, I, I mean, I would, I would go so far. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if this is a one-off. I don't know if this is a comedy. I don't know if this is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All I know is that this movie goes straight to number one with the bullet of movies that I want to see. Well, I mean, because there's three different things. And by the way, guys, the Super Chats are open. If you've got a thought, opinion, theory, question about any of this stuff, go ahead and fire it in. We'll, we'll get to that here fairly soon. This is the interesting thing about this piece of news, okay? It is three separate pieces of news yeah. <laughs> into one thing. Number one, we have our release date for Deadpool 3. It's. I mean, we all knew they were putting it together. We knew it was coming, but it is now official. It's coming. And we got a release date for it, September 6, 2024. It's on its way coming. That's piece of news number one. Piece of news number two, completely divorced of any of that. Hugh Jackman is coming back to play Wolverine one more time. Okay? Listen, all due respect to the amazing work that Robert Downey Jr. did and will do in the future as Tony Stark. All due respect to my favorite movie star in the world, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, and this is a aviation gin shot worthy moment for sure. But like all due respect to my favorite movie star, Ryan Reynolds, good Canadian kid playing Deadpool. There is no one in comic book movie history who is more identified with the role that they play and was more born to play that role than Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine. And he played it for two decades. That almost. Nobody wanted him when they first announced him, by the way. Nobody wanted this. Who's the six foot two guy? That's not, that's not my Wolverine. Well, anyway, now we can't even picture it. But so piece of news number one, we're official. We got Deadpool 3 really state. Piece of news number two, forget Deadpool. Hugh Jackman is coming back to play Wolverine one more time. Piece of news number three, Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman on screen together as Deadpool and Wolverine. You put any one of those three pieces of news out there, any one of those three pieces of news, and it's huge. This is nuclear. Like, I, I, I honestly cannot imagine a, a piece of comic book movie news that could be dropped tomorrow that would get not just the core movie fans, but the world as excited about a comic book movie thing. Like, you could, you could announce Leo DiCaprio's playing Doctor Doom tomorrow. That's going to be very meaningful to certain people, sure. but nothing like this. Like, I can't think of anything else on this level. You know what I think is great about this? With all the strife, you got a hurricane bearing down on the on the Gulf Coast. You know, you you all the stuff that's happening in the world. This is just something that will put a smile on even the most jaded. Even if you have a lump of coal in your heart instead of a heart, uh, this has to put a smile on your face. If you're a movie fan, if you're a, a fan of science fiction, horror, sci-fi, comic book, movie, whatever. This movie news, this is what we this is why we are movie pundits. This is the this is why we do what we do. Absolutely. It's and, for days and moments like this. And I have to say, what what I really like about this, I love when the industry, when people who have clout in the industry, Ryan Reynolds certainly does on many different levels. He's become an entrepreneur. His movies, the Deadpool franchise is a $1.5 billion franchise after two movies. He has a friendship that he's cultivated on using using social media something positive something fun something we've all followed for years that also puts a smile on our faces it was it would take the two of them and kevin feige to be able to make something like this happen i would love to see <laughs> you know what i really wish that that i want to see next i want to see a follow-up video where ryan reynolds is in bob chapek's office <laughs> explaining this to him and explaining mr chapek this is why you're gonna uh, say yes to this you're, you're about to get something from kevin feige's office right and then he's looking he's looking at and i can just imagine ryan reynolds bouncing in the wall in the background like I'm can i see that can i see that other, i don't know if you've got it uh taylor but i'd love to see that other bob chapek picture anyway. i mean i i can only imagine i mean you know what this is a decision that goateed that bearded bob chapek made <laughs> that's what i'm thinking because this this, I mean, it's a slow news week. There's not a lot of things in the the box office. You got Avatar. It's a number one movie. Let's make a Deadpool announcement. Why not? And by the way, it's it's other celebrities too are being floored oh, by this. Oh yes, they John are. Krasinski got on social media, and he did. I mean, first of all, Krasinski is almost a, as good on social media as like Ryan Reynolds is. He's terrific. Well, he, on didn't it. he bring us the show the only the good news or whatever it was called yeah, during yeah, the pandemic? Good, yeah, the good news something or other. Yeah. But this is John Krasinski retweeted Ryan Reynolds' tweet and says, wait, is this our movie? 
It's like, okay, so he's got to add smoke. He's got to add smoke to the fire here. And now he too. knew this was coming. I mean, he knew. I, but just the way he says, "Is this our movie?" Of course, everybody's talking about him with mm. the Fantastic Four coming out. Is he going to be a part of that? I would not take, by the way, John Krasinski's tweet as any kind of a thing. No. But let, let's move into now. Okay, let's move beyond for a second, if I can. I don't know if you can tell. I am super excited about that. Well, we can tell. I mean, listen, if you had asked me yesterday, do you think that Hugh Jackman could pop up one last time in Deadpool 3? Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, there's a difference between a theoretical thought in your head about what you think will happen or what happened, to it becoming reality. Yeah. There's a big difference to that, right? The, the best I, I can describe it is like the day before your wedding. Yeah, you know you're getting married, but then I'm here. I, I'm actually marrying the woman of my dreams or the, or, or the love of my life or whoever. Like, that's the difference. So I'm I'm a little bit juiced right now. You, you got to forgive me. I'm a bit juiced. This is one of the most... I, I would put this up, honestly, Rob, with I remember back at AMC... The day we we talked about the announcement came out that Disney had bought Lucasfilm. I, I remember that day. I remember exactly where I was standing in the AMC offices. I remember exactly running over to my desk and getting everything loaded and doing a video about that. I don't think since then have I been more excited about a piece of breaking news. Whether or not we saw it coming is this. Okay, but let's let's get past the juice for a second. Yeah. Let's talk about what this could actually be because it's interesting. I don't believe anybody on the planet believes Wolverine that that Hugh Jackman is coming back to be Wolverine in the MCU from now on. No, actually, the video itself is pretty clear. Ryan Reynolds says, hey, Hugh, you want to play Wolverine one more time? To which Hugh says, he's walking, sure. Yeah, Ryan. Right. Yeah, so Ryan. <laughs> it's one more time. So we do not expect he is not going to be Wolverine in the no. MCU moving forward. We're going to get a different Wolverine, all that kind of stuff. These are two Fox properties. These are two Fox era uh, legacy characters. Might I posit something? Yes. I think he's going to play Wolverine twice. I'm willing to put money on the fact he's going to be in Secret Wars. You know, I gave some thought to that. I don't think he will. I, I, I think, I think the reason they worded that, I think the reason they worded that video, I think that was not just some grammatical choice. I think it was a definitive choice that they make to say, listen, Let's make sure we're making it really clear in this that people aren't thinking I'm coming back. I think they were very intentional in saying one more. I don't know. They need time. all that. They need all the people they can get to make Secret Wars what they want it to be. Yeah, but I think if he was going to be in that, they would have announced that ages ago. And by the way, it would have come out. I, I mean, with that, I don't thing, think he's signed shot. for it yet. I, I it's think already that, shot. They're done shooting that show. No, I mean Secret Wars. Oh, Secret Wars. I'm Secret thinking Wars. of Secret Invasion. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, of Secret no, no, Invasion. Secret Wars, the movie. Uh, I again, I. I mean, it's a perfect place for him to show up. Sure, but. You're going to probably want to highlight, you're going to probably want to use that Avengers thing to propel not the outgoing thing, but rather the incoming well, thing. Well, with Secret Wars, they've got to have all, it's the culmination of the multiverse saga. So they're well, going to have all see, different kinds I know, but of, I think they were, they, I think they said one more time for, so, so people like you and me sure. wouldn't get excited about that potential idea. But, but let me ask you this though, because this is the thing we've often talked about, you know, what happens with Deadpool 3, will it be in MCU proper? Will it not? I think you both you and I have been on the same page that both of us kind of felt like it might be better off if it wasn't MCU proper, but we think it's going to be in MCU proper. With, with them having Hugh Jackman, who neither of us think is going to be the MCU's Wolverine, does this give you any sort of a... A leaning about how I, where where is Deadpool three going to be positioned in and of itself? I think this movie part of the plot of this movie is going to be Deadpool's. <laughs> I love that image. <laughs> Deadpool's actual transition into the MCU. I think this movie is going to begin in the Fox X Men universe where Deadpool has resided, and it will end with Deadpool officially in the MCU. I think I don't know how it's going to work, but I think part of that plot is they're going to journey together or something. And the end of the movie, if unless they bring it back for Secret Wars, is going to be a for, sort of a tragic story where Wolverine, as we know him, will be gone. I mean, on the one hand, we got such a great ending for Hugh Jackman's run as Wolverine in Logan. I mean, Logan, to me, is a top three greatest comic book movie of all time. And I'll argue anybody about that. And his ending, his personal ending in that was so beautiful and poetic and tragic all at the same time. It, it, it's almost a shame to bring him back again. 
But we've always said, unless it was in Deadpool. Yeah. Because they're, they're, they're like a Deadpool is like a get out of jail free card. You can do anything you want in a Deadpool movie. And I mean, Ryan Reynolds visited himself. Yes. In Deadpool and too. murdered himself. Yeah. In Deadpool 2, by the way. Uh, let's talk for a second, too, about how uh, let's go on about our good Canadian kid, Ryan Reynolds. The single greatest, even greater than Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the single greatest celebrity at marketing. Nobody can market their shit like Ryan Reynolds markets his stuff. And this this was so on brand. This announcement video was so on brand for everything we've seen from Deadpool. Yeah, and this was not some video they threw together in an afternoon. I mean, I mean, they might have shot it in the afternoon, but it was there's it has great cinematography. It was clearly done. This was something that he probably wrote into himself, but they had to get him and I guess they had to get him and him and Hugh Jackman in the same room together. Even though, but I mean, it's it the whole thing is really well done, beautifully conceived. The logo's great. What's not to love? I mean, it's it's just so good, guys. For those of you just joining us, and I'm sure many of you are, um, it, it's official. It's been announced. Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. I've announced that Hugh Jackman is coming back to play Wolverine one more time. At least that's what they're saying. One more time in Deadpool 3. Uh, and I I don't know if you can tell. I'm a little excited about this. I'm a little bit excited Damn about Damn exciting. This. It is such an exciting... Again, Rob, you, you said it earlier. This is the type of day that we do this job for. This is the type of day we do this I for. I mean, as a lifelong comic book fan and as a lifelong movie fan... And I love the Deadpool films, you know, and to see an announcement like this happen, it doesn't happen a lot. I mean, you should have seen Chapek's face. <laughs> what, what, what did Chapek look like? Yeah, there he is. <laughs> he can see the dollar bills rolling in. I mean, listen, right now, this movie starts as a billion dollar film. This starts as a billion dollar film. That's, that's the baseline. Now, you really want to make Bob Chapek dead to me. Have him announce that this is going straight to Disney+. Plus. I got a question for you. Yes. Over or under 40% Patrick Stewart's in this movie? Shit. Ah. <laughs> Want to make that deal with Ray? <laughs> Over or under <laughs> that we find out Patrick Stewart, who also has been referenced in the Deadpool film. Yeah, and who mentioned that he was uh, not adverse to coming back as Professor X for whatever reason. No, he said Kevin. he had meetings with Kevin Feige. Of course, we saw him pop up Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Because I, this movie... I gotta go... Well, well, also, him and... In legit real life, him and Hugh Jackman are very tight. Yeah. Patrick Stewart and him. I gotta go over. I'll go over 40. I'm not gonna say definite, but I'll say over 40% on that. I mean, and I'll say this. I bet this happens canonically, if you want to call it that, pre-Logan. I think... I, I Because they've got to play at the end some bittersweet sad thing where where deadpool knows what's going to happen to Logan. i think it's adorable that in this deadpool movie you're even using the word canonically <laughs> i think i think that's adorable i don't think there's anything canon or canonical about any of this this is deadpool <laughs> come on this is deadpool could be i, I mean you know but okay. i'm a canonista john i know hey and normally i am too deadpool though gives you a little bit of wiggle room, it does right? it gives you but i but i, I you know because, like you said, you don't want to. I don't even think Deadpool would want to interfere with Logan's great death in uh, Logan. I, I know it is so beautiful, but listen, I gotta. In the midst of all this incredible hype and joy that I I personally feel about this, there 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 is an elephant in the room, and it is briefly addressed in the video. Shouldn't we say there's a rainbow unicorn in the room? Uh, I mean, that's actually probably a better way to put it. Yes, <laughs> it and it is briefly addressed in the video itself. Why in the living F was this not announced at D23? Now, like the one theory I had, Rob, you and I were talking about this before we went, on, went to air. The one theory I had was, okay, what if Ryan or Hugh couldn't physically be there? They're shooting something, sure. or whatever. And they think, well, what's the point if they're not there in person? But you just announced it with a video. I mean, even if they just said, hey, guys, we have a special announcement from Ryan Reynolds. And then they the room goes dark, screen comes up, and you just play that video D20. Well, especially at the uh, Marvel at the Marvel panel. It's exactly what I'm talking about. I why mean, not at the, why was this not played at the Marvel they panel? They ended with Thunderbolts. I mean, can you imagine Kevin Feige walking out and going, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, maybe, I mean, I can, and it's not just Ryan Reynolds. I bet they both of them couldn't 
their schedule's not permitting. They're probably across the, the world. Who knows? They, I, I mean, I think that's probably a good bet that if they were going to make this announcement, they would want them there. Play this video and have them both come on stage. Right. Now, there, there's a theory out there. Rob, you brought it up yourself. I've seen one or two people mention it. It's like, well, maybe the deals weren't signed yet. Okay, or something. Here's why I can't believe that. They have been writing this script for over six months. Right. They've got their story. It's done. And they don't work for it on for six months and write the script and complete the script only to then go, oh, we didn't close the deal with you, Jackman? Start well, the script again. I, I believe this is something that has been in place and the deal has been in place for long before D23. Uh, so I... Uh, the, other, the other thing that I think the reason they did this is because the trades could have had this, that somebody would have broken it first and somebody knew because they're if they're only they're less than two years away from filming that means they're probably well, they're less than two years from it coming out coming out that's what i mean um that it's probably filming quickly and there's just going to be trade news that pops like this movie's going into production because you can't you have to hire crew you know yeah. you have to hire all these people so i would imagine this they 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 weren't ready to announce it at d23 for whatever reason they were hitting a wall they had to announce it themselves and control their own narrative and i'm sure ryan reynolds being the guy he is he's like you know what We'll handle that announcement. Let me do what I do, and we'll we'll do it before the trades get it, before anyone else could break it. Because you know what, Variety was pretty Johnny on the spot with this information. Well, I think I think Variety. My my thought is Variety found out about this, but I don't think they found out about it until after D twenty three. Maybe, and yeah. they were probably say, "Look, hold it, and you can be the first one to break." Because it they like they had this story published within a half an hour of this break this video oh i got it, it was published within minutes oh, okay. of, of the thing coming out so yeah. it, they so they obviously it was coordinated as uh, somebody in the live chat jack, uh, jack zafke is saying hey john but what if hugh jackman is just playing himself and not wolverine well i mean they could but it specifically said in the video yeah. hey hugh you want to play wolverine one more time to which hugh jackman says yeah sure ryan so they do say in the video it is going to be playing wolverine yes because if we had found out that Hugh Jackman was going to be, let's say we, the news broke that Hugh Jackman was going to be in Deadpool 3, and that's all we knew. It absolutely is a possibility we would have considered that he's just, he's literally going to play Hugh Jackman. That he play himself a la, uh, oh, who was it in, in um, uh, White Castle? Um, Kumar and, uh, Neil, Patrick Neil Patrick Harris. Harris. What if he was going to pull a Neil Patrick Harris, right? And that... That would be a totally reasonable thing to, sure. to think was a possibility, but they did go out of their way to specifically say, you want to play Wolverine. Uh, and so there's that. And listen, guys, we could go on here for another. I can't tell if you, I don't know if you can tell. I'm a little jacked. I'm a little enthusiastic about this. I am so effing excited about this. I cannot even put it into words. Uh, again, for those of you just joining, Hugh, it's official. Hugh Jackman is coming back as Wolverine. For one more ride in Deadpool 3, and we've got a release date of September 6th, 2024, which means this thing's going to go into production soon. In, in the matter of months, it's going to go into production, and the thing comes out in theaters in less than two years. Uh, super excited about that. So listen, guys, we're going to spend the rest of our time now hearing your thoughts and opinions and perspectives on this whole thing, plus anything else you want to talk about. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be writing in about the Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds together, finally, uh, as Deadpool and Wolverine. But before we're going to get into that stuff and care, and we're going to keep going with this conversation, before we do, though, we're going to take a second and, oddly enough, hear from Ryan Reynolds' company, my cell phone service provider, Mint Mobile, and thank them for sponsoring this episode. Hey guys, we want to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month. And now for the plot twist. I'm just kidding, there isn't one. Seriously, Mint Mobile just has premium wireless service from 15 bucks a month. There's no trapping you into a two-year contract or opening the bill to find these crazy fees. There's no luring you in with free subscriptions to streaming services that you'll forget to cancel and be charged full price for. I used to dread opening my phone bill every month because every time I was opening it, it was like playing rule. I never knew what the actual price was going to be and it always seemed to get higher, but not with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family and at Mint, families start at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And if you're worried about the complication of switching things over, don't. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your phone number along with all your existing contacts. So guys, get premium wireless from just 15 bucks a month and 
and no unexpected plot twists at mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Seriously, you'll make your wallet very happy at mintmobile.com slash campia. And thank you to Ryan Reynolds and Mint Mobile for sponsoring this episode. All right. Uh, how many Welcome to Wrexham references do you think is going to be in Deadpool 3? Oh, my God. I want them to go so savage on the MCU references. Oh, I, I do, too. I go so savage on it. I think that'd be amazing. Okay, guys, listen. I told you that we would spend the rest of our time taking your thoughts and opinions and questions and, and, and observations about this story uh, and anything else you want to talk about, too. So we're going to do that right now. Let's head on over to those super chats you guys have been throwing in there. So what do we got up here first? Well, we've got Matt Boyle sends in a super chat and says, who came first? Oh, oh wait, no, that, that was, was from the morning show. Uh, yeah, Victor. you're... You're so, a Vixter yes. first. Vixter 5001 says, did you see Krasinski tweet to Ryan? What's Reed Richards trying to say? You know what? I, a thought came to my head as we were talking about that. Let's not forget that Ryan Reynolds is actually going to be in a movie that John Krasinski is directing called If. Yeah. So when he says, wait, is this our movie? Maybe he's referring to yeah, If that. as opposed to, I initially took it as a Fantastic Four yeah, yeah. kind of tease. Either way, it's a brilliant tweet by John Krasinski. All right, very what's next? Funny. Uh, Sadu says, what's more likely, mutants in Deadpool, uh, <laughs> mutants in Black Panther 2 or Doctor Doom? Well, it's 100% that a mutant's going to be in Black Panther 2 yeah. because according to uh, Huerta, who's playing uh, Namor, Namor is, at least this is what the report is saying, Namor is indeed a mutant. So you got to take 100% <laughs> over anything else. So yeah. mutants showing up is definitely the bigger For thing. For sure. All right, what's next? <laughs> Fred Lambie says, this is such good news and it will be R-rated. This must be a dream. I love everything you guys do. Sending regards from Canada. Montreal. Love Montreal. Montreal. Listen, some of you might be saying, wait a minute. I didn't see anything in that video saying it's going to be rated R. True. But remember, Kevin Feige already said publicly a number of months ago when talking about uh, Blade, saying, yeah, yeah, we're not going to go into R-rated stuff because Blade's not going to be R-rated, except for Deadpool. That's the big ex exception they've always said. So we've known for quite a while that Deadpool will be rated R, and it's going to be great to see. And I want to see some dudes getting cut up by these two. Oh, and you know they will. We're going to we're going to get see Hugh Jackman go savage on people like we've never been able to see it before because now it gets to be rated R. All right, what's next? Uh, Fred Lambie says, "Oh, I already got that one." Al Renshaw says, "I tapped out of She-Hulk after episode three. I tapped out after the most recent one again." I love the concept of the show. I love that. I have no problem with anything they do with the show philosophy wise or structure wise. I love the concept and I love the approach. The problem is you can have that, but you got to be funny. If you're a comedy, you got to be funny. And I just don't find it funny. I love the first couple of episodes, but the, it's lack of ability to actually be funny has ultimately lost me. Mm -hmm. All right. What's next? James LH says in honor of the Poitier doc, my favorite four movies are Blackboard Jungle, In the Heat of the Night, Sneakers, and Directing Stir Crazy. Uh, I like that. No, no, guess who's coming to dinner? I, I, what can I say? That's my favorite. Uh, well, it's such Heat great, of the Night is brilliant. It's such though. a great movie. Yeah, so, good, but, so good. But guess who's coming to dinner? I like the mine. call out for directing Stir Crazy, though. Yeah. That's good. All right, what's next? Um, uh, oh, James L. H. John, uh, yeah, it's the same one. Okay, James L. H. says John newly released on Apple the Sydney Poitier documentary. Within ten minutes, I was hooked after he talks about an encounter with police as a teen. It was very powerful. I did not even know they had that out. I had there. no idea. No, I knew I that no it was coming either. out. I didn't know it was out now. But it's must watch. Absolutely, like, that's absolutely must watch. Oh. Thanks for putting that on the radar, James. Appreciate that, man. All right, what's next? Uh, Groovy don't play says John and Rob and Chris this year. Does this mean we might get to see the fastball special done right? I love you guys. Okay, okay, okay. So this this thought crossed my head. All right, look, we still don't know for sure if we're gonna get Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead in in this, and of course her friend Yuki. Um, God, Yuki is adorable. She's um, adorable. Anyway, we don't know if they officially be there. But if they are, and I hope they are, because Colossus is one of the shining gems of the Deadpool movies. If they are, there is zero chance, zero chance we don't get a fastball special. Oh, yeah. How, how can you not? Nice, by the way, nice grab. Oh, nice. Very That's a quick great, grab very on well, that, Taylor. Well done. Well done. I mean, you, there you. is a zero percent chance we don't get the fastball special. They have to. Yeah. 
They have if they if they don't, this can be the greatest movie of all time, and I'll say it's a crap movie. You missed the opportunity. Well, no, I'm not going. No, they're going. They're going they to absolutely it. use the fact. And by the way, put that up one more time. I wouldn't mind seeing this kind of a Wolverine costume in the movie. I absolutely do not want that Wolverine costume. I think it would look stupid. I think they can do a good version of it. If they've got Deadpool in a costume, they've got to have Wolverine in a good costume. Ah, I like it. Not, not necessarily that particular costume, but in a Wolverine costume. Sure, sure. Yeah, there are, there are some other iterations yeah, that yeah. would work. It, oh, yeah, it's yeah. going to look think, good. It's not going to look stupid. I think the stupid. yellow spandex one would look pretty pretty bad no right. but they're gonna have they gotta be in two co they gotta be in costume together yeah like i like this days of future past costume right here yeah i love that one yeah all right what's next uh joe uh Fant says i did not expect this hugh announcement today no now that listen if you had asked me yesterday do you think hugh jackman could be uh, absolutely there's a good strong chance this announcement is huge it's real it's now you it's hugh not huge it's a hugh it's announcement you it's an absolutely humongous announcement all right what's next uh, Eric Benson says, I thought Ryan was joking the whole time, and I was just making fun of Hugh since he told Ryan, no, I do not want to come back as Wolverine. I half expected that. I half expected an X-Men first class kind of reaction where, hey, you want to play Wolverine all the time? Fuck off, Ryan. That's, I was really kind of half expecting that. And then once he said yes, I'm still like, okay, but is this a joke? And then the official Marvel logo comes out, and then Variety instantly drops this, the news. I'm like, this is real. And by the way, kudos to Marvel. Kudos to Ryan Reynolds. Kudos for Hugh Jackman for doing this. Yeah. It could have just been a trade announcement on deadline. Yep. This, that, this was something they spent time, effort, and money on. They did this for the fan base, and it's pretty cool. It's, it's fantastic, and it's captured the news cycle. I would put, this, I would put that in theaters. Man, put it in front of Avatar and IMAX. All right, what's next? Uh, Fangblaze 71 says, my favorite MCU show is Falcon and Winter Soldier. Really good action and interactions between Sam and Bucky is just hilarious. I, again, I love their dynamic together. I, I can't say that I loved the show, but I liked it. They certainly yeah. had some tremendous themes. Uh, the Bucky-Sam relationship, I thought, ended up being really, really good. I especially like it once Bucky started uh, giving the how you doing to his sister. Right. That started being really good. Uh, but there's certainly things I liked about it, but still a mid-level one for me. Yeah. All right, what's next? Eric Benson says, so many questions, so many feelings after seeing that video. Like, we were waiting almost two years for Deadpool 3. Can't wait. You know, Rob, it was at three cinema cons ago. You and I were at a cinema con like yeah. three, four years ago where Alan Horn, the great Alan Horn, was on stage during the Disney presentation, and he brought up Deadpool yes, and Deadpool did. 3. I, I never would have thought we'd be sitting here like three or four years later and we still don't have it. But now only getting the announcement. Either way, it's 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 something we knew was coming, but it's the tangibilization. It's here. It's real. I cannot believe it. Like, I, I, I'm just... It's amazing. I'm so excited for this. Like, my whole movie life right now <laughs> is just a countdown. My movie life right now is not a countdown clock to the next Avengers movie. My movie life right now is a countdown clock to this Deadpool film. <laughs> That's what this is all about now. All right, what's next? Mickey Bell says, Ryan Reynolds really said, oh, your D23 event with its cute little announcements. Hold my chimichangas. Here's the, this is the, the sad truth. This one video announcement, 10 times better than all of D23 put together. Yeah. And all of it put together. And particularly talking about the the Marvel Lucasfilm well, announcement day. John, this is also the big announcement we speculated. You speculated. You said for yeah. sure the thing they're going to do is announce Deadpool 3. Yeah, for sure. I you, mean, that, that was a foregone conclusion. You said it. Yep. Well, you were, I mean, okay, might not have happened at D23, but two weeks later. Yeah, but the, again, why? It, it raises the question again. What's the point of D23? I mean, when you can have something like this happen not at D23, and it's 10 times bigger and better, and we didn't need D23 for it. Again, I'm not trying to take away anything else from all the other non-Marvel, <laughs> all the other non-Marvel and non-Lucasfilm stuff. There were some very, very good things for Disney fans to celebrate at D23. Sure. Absolutely. But as a Marvel fan or a Lucasfilm fan, guess what? D23 doesn't mean shit anymore because they can just drop this like this now and it's 10 times bigger, more exciting, and better than anything they did at D23. Anyway, all right. Amazing. 
What's next? Quality Not Included says Deadpool kills the Fox universe. Calling it now. Uh, no, no. I don't think they're going to be able to get that many people involved. And I don't think that's a storyline they'd want to do. Right. But um, then it would be fun. Maybe, you know, what if? I mean, Deadpool now being here, this kind of opens the door for one of the seasons of what if to maybe do an episode like that. Yeah. Totally does. All right. What's next? Uh, Chris Retzlaff says, John, important distinction in House of the Dragon. The princess has three kids out of wedlock. The queen has four in wedlock. Bastards are illegitimate to hold power. Has nothing to do with blood or genetics. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I get that. However, if you're king, guess what? The king can say whatever he wants. And the queen can say whatever whatever she wants. If the king says that bastard is going to be the next to, one to rule the Iron Throne, guess what? That's what happens. So it, it, it doesn't really matter. Also, the genetics thing. How come the half Tigarians over here get blonde hair, but the half Tigarians over here don't? Again, I just don't understand Westeros biology. <laughs> I barely understand our own human biology, let alone Westeros biology. So uh, whatever. All right. But thanks for writing that in, man. I appreciate that. All right. What's next? Uh, Miguel Zayan says, simple question, over or under 10%, there will be a hint or just a small tease of Dr. Doom in Black Panther 2 even just at the very end. Thanks, and been a longtime fan. i got to say over 10%. Yeah, me like, too. I'm not going to say 60 or 70%, but I, I've got to believe over 10%. I'd, I think if we're going to see Dr. Doom, we're not going to see that Dr. Doom. We're going to see Victor Von Doom, statesman. Of maybe, Latveria, maybe the yeah. leader of that Latveria. This is something that comes later. Maybe. But again, it's not. It, Dr. Doom does not seem like a natural fit to be introduced in a Black Panther movie. Well, I, but, but you know, Telecan, whatever, how that's going to go, I could see them being allies somehow. Might be. Something's going on there. Right. And that, it would be really interesting. You, they introduce him in the movie, but in the end, and uh, post credit scene, that's when he's in the full garb. All right. What's something. next? Uh, Al Renshaw says, when I heard the Wolverine news, I thought of the office meme. It's happening. Everybody calm it's down. It's happening. Calm oh my the God. F down. Oh, my God. It's happening. This is a reference Rob does not understand because he's not worth this. Oh, my God. It's happening. Everybody stay calm. It's, this, this is it. I, again, I, I've said it before, and I'm not using hyperbole here. In my career doing this, and I've been doing this a <laughs> long time, not since the day they announced that Disney had bought Lucasfilm and Star Wars was coming back, I, I don't think there's been a day where we've had a, a piece of news drop that I've been this excited about. Uh, this is the best thing I've heard in, the, in my career. I mean, I'm really, that's how excited <laughs> I am about this particular project. I'm so stoked for it. All right, what's next? Uh, Al Renshaw says, can't wait to see Deadpool make jokes about Wolverine and the rest of the X-Men. Over or under 30% we get Patrick Stewart or Ian McKellen cameo as well. Ian McKellen, I'm not so sure. Uh, but Patrick Stewart, again, I'm not going to say 70%, but I will go over 30. Again, oh. when when you understand that that Stewart has officially talked, he's talked with Kevin Feige about stuff. He did pop up in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Hugh Jackman and him are incredibly tight. They've made Patrick Stewart jokes in Deadpool movies before. I think you have to take the over on a 30% line, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> but with Ian McKellen, I honestly don't think so. I would no, love I, it, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Although, I mean, I, I think all bets are off. It's uh, true. No, nothing, it's, you're right. Nothing you're right. would surprise me with this because if they're pulling out all the stops for this, they're going to pull out all the stops. Yeah, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but whereas Stewart, I automatically take the over 30%. Yeah, because line. he's but already McKellen, been in Doctor Strange. McKellen, I would probably say a possibility, but I would take under the 30%. Line. Totally agree. All right. What's next? Totally agree. Sam Fisher says, out of morbid curiosity, I want to see Viserys shirtless. <laughs> see how far his leprosy has progressed because the showrunners confirmed that's what he has. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, Patty Constantly talked in an interview about the fact that they're saying, because a lot of people thought it might have been grayscale, but it was not. Uh, he's he's had his arm amputated now, the whole bit. I mean, obviously, he's not going to last much longer. No. he's He's got to go at some point here, so the Civil War can start. <laughs> so we got to get there. All right, what's true. next? Josh Becker says, any Chris Nolan movie you would want a sequel from? Batman? <laughs> <laughs> um not in uh, insomnia is maybe my favorite movie christopher Knowles, but not insomnia not interstellar not uh inception not 
You know what? I really can't think of one that I not even. May, there could be some interesting things you could do with Memento, but even then, I'm not really sure. I, I think you could do a Tenant sequel. You could. You know, there's something. I, I don't think people would want it. I, 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 that's yeah, uh, but I think you could do something. It'd be interesting. Yeah, I Tenant is a movie I keep watching, and I'm still baffled by it every time I watch it. <laughs> but I watch a lot. And I watch it with subtitles on. And it looks great. It does. It's a beautiful looking film. All right, what's next? Uh, A-Rod 2006, 2006 says, Deadpool 3 is officially my most anticipated film of Phase 5. Hugh Jackman is back. Screw Phase 5. Deadpool 3 is now my most anticipated, <laughs> my most anticipated movie, period, full stop, end of sentence. Don't get me wrong. Super excited about Black Panther 2. I'm super excited about an eventual Shang-Chi 2. Super excited about... You know, we'll see if uh, uh, if a Ben Affleck Batman movie ever material. I'd be excited about that. I'd be, I'm super excited about uh, new Avengers movies. But this movie is now my number one most anticipated movie for the next two years. Dude. I, I mean, it just is. I, I, you could offer me a ticket to any movie that's coming out that I get to see tomorrow. This is the ticket I pick. Right there with you. All right. What's next? Sam Fisher says, my guess they didn't announce Jackman coming back for Deadpool 3 at D23 because Jackman hadn't signed on the dotted line yet. Uh, again, I don't buy that at all. These things are always in place, usually long before official announcements are made. And on top of that, they the way they've written their script, <laughs> you, you, it's just like, he's in it or we don't make this movie. Uh, we have to do a completely different movie. I have movie. one other thought. Maybe it's because it's rated R. That they didn't want to announce it at a D23 event? Right. At D23 being a Disney event, Disney is not rated R. But it is a Disney movie. I, I know. I know. And they might release this under 20 seconds. And there was nothing R-rated about the announcement. No, but but you know what was really interesting? It didn't say Disney on the announcement. It said Marvel Studios. Well, that's just what they like, normally does with their stuff. Right, but I mean, but but with Marvel Studios, Marvel Studios is on the front of Morbius. It's on the front of the Sony Spider-Man movies. Marvel is their generic term for any Marvel property, but it didn't say Disney anywhere. But it doesn't normally for the other Marvel films just, either. I, I don't know if I'm just saying. It's you know what? Out of all the bad theories, that's the best one. I mean, I I, I mean honestly, I can't. The best bad theory. I mean, I don't have a better one. Yeah, no, I don't. But I would think that 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 could be an. I'm just thinking that could yeah, be another. I mean, it's a possibility, but I don't. I don't, know. I don't believe that it's because. Ooh, they just weren't able to get the deal with Hugh Jackman. No, no, no. This is no, a long time coming. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah. All right. What's next? Uh, Flover ninety nine says, "Hi, John." What improvements should Rings of Power do for season two? Pace. Just pick up the pace. Just just determine what is the point a scene is supposed to make. Get there in the most efficient way possible, in an interesting way possible, and then move on to the next scene. Uh, and, and that's the thing. Again, I don't mind that there haven't been any big battles or anything. That's fine. Like, look at House of the Dragon. There's just been a lot of action in that thing, but it's the pace of the storytelling. They need to pick up the pace. Hopefully, they don't wait till season two to do it. Hopefully, they... And and we've seen them start to pick up the pace with episodes four and five. I hope that continues. Yeah. All right, what's next? Richard K says, if Namor is the main villain in Black Panther 2, he is a hero in the comics, so will he turn good at the end and end up as part of the Avengers? Well, Richard, I'll answer that one. Namor has always, his allegiances have always shifted. I mean, he was a straight-up villain uh, for a long time in the Marvel's comic universe. So I would imagine what I, what I see happening in this uh, movie is that this Telecon, or uh, I still, Telecan, Teleca I'm still not quite, I got to wrap my head around it because I'm so used to Atlantis and Namor. But I think that, that he's definitely an antagonist. He is not a friend of Wakanda. And I'm sure because of Wakanda making uh, itself visible to the rest of the world that the Telecans object to this, uh, it's still going to be hard for me. I, I need to hear, see the movie before I understand how to refer to all this. But I don't think Namor is going to turn good. I think Namor is an anti-hero before he's not. And I think we're going to see him do some things that's going to make it very difficult to look at him in heroic light. Yeah. At least of, I hope so. I think he's going to flood Wakanda like he did in the comics. We'll see. I think All so. right. What's next? Uh, Josh Becker says, the Deadpool news. What the F? Hugh is back. Hugh's back. Again, this, this is three monumental announcements wrapped into one. My God. Deadpool 3 official release date. Hugh Jackman is coming back as Wolverine. 
And Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds finally doing a thing together as Wolverine and Devil. This is three, any one of those three pieces of news on their own is the week's main headline. Together, it's a career headline for me. So, uh, yeah, very exciting. All right. What's it next? is very exciting. Uh, Max said, oh, my God, Ryan announces Hugh for Deadpool 3. What? Yes. Yes, he did. Super stoked about it. Brilliant way to do it, too. All right. What's next? Uh, Michael Bradley says, hello, John and Rob. What do you think of Star Blazers? It's my favorite anime show of all time. I My love of Star Blazers knows no bounds. Both when I was growing up, the originals and the remake, by the way. If also you, known as Space Battleship Space Yamato. Battleship Yamato 2199, 2202, and now the recent 2205 is one of the best remakes ever. And um, as a matter of fact, I just got a, a message from my Japanese buyer. More parts to my uh, Earth Defense Directorate four-foot-long space carrier from the universe of Star Blazers. I got my next four. Do you four. have the Space Battleship Yamato model? I do. And it's how big? It's, it's, oh, that's about, it's about this big. I will buy it off you. No, you cannot buy it off me. No, really, really. You, like, this no, is one no, of, no, no, no. This no. is one of those situations where it's a name your price sort of thing? Nope. Can't do it because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Now, <laughs> perhaps you didn't hear me say a name your price kind of I scenario. I can't because it's, I can get you one. Do I have to bring Elizabeth into this conversation? <laughs> Do I maybe have to reach out and say, hey, Elizabeth, I offered Rob a bunch of money to give me one what? of his toys. Okay. And he said no. The thing that I have is not the best thing. What you want is, is you want the Hachette version. I want that version too. And it, it you have to build it. But you don't have to paint it. No, Taylor it's, will build it. That's it's, fine. It, uh -oh. I'll build it for you. It's incredible. <laughs> don't laugh. I, I put up a picture in the community tab. It's, it's about this big, by the way. Actually, uh, pull up the community tab on our YouTube channel for a second and scroll down till you see the picture of the Star Destroyer. Okay. But I came across this four foot, yeah. four and a half foot long Star Destroyer. And it was something like 16 feet thousand individual pieces it's not lego it's lego like there look at the size of that thing now yeah, that's th amazing this particular guy that's not, yeah it's not this particular guy it said it took him two months so Anne said you'll never do it i'm like what why do you think i have taylor on staff <laughs> taylor will build this thing for me uh oh i got and and whereas the actual official lego one is smaller than this and it goes for like a couple of thousand bucks. This is like three hundred dollars. And wow. look at it. Wait, look at it. Is that an actual? Wow, it's a kit you could buy. That's really. Cool. I wonder yeah. if it's like bricks, blocks, Wait, or it's something. Not Lego? No, it's it's not officially Lego. It's, it, it's it another might company. Be that German company. That so I blocks. would like I would get Taylor to put this thing together. Hell, I might get Taylor and Ray to both work on it. I'll work. I'll, I'll do it, Taylor. News. And then it would be <laughs> breaking out the crackle. It would be getting out the crazy glue and slathering it in glue to make sure it never comes yeah, apart. Yeah, that would be, yeah, you'd have to build God, it. With, yeah. yeah. All right, sorry, we got off on the tangent there. Let's we're get back to yes. what's next. We're off to outer space. Toshi Save Victor said, the human race. going to watch Amsterdam tonight. So excited. Uh, I mean, I, I'm stoked to see it. Uh, I mean, Christian killed some of my enthusiasm because he's, he doesn't think I'm going to like it very much, but I'm very excited to see it too. Damn it. All right, what's next? Uh, what's next is William Dwan says, personal take. The multiverse doesn't remove the meaning of a character's death any more than a pet store removes the sorrow of losing a long-cherished dog. One's uh, fictional uh, fictional storytelling, one's something that's in real life. Yeah, that, there's a big difference. And that's not true. A, 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 a dog isn't just a generic companion. When you lose a dog, it's part of your family. No, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. There's a big difference between fictional stories and real life yeah, but, something but like, also just because you get another dog doesn't mean you've missed the dog it doesn't mean it, it doesn't take away the sting of losing a favorite pet that's my that's exactly what i'm saying i mean so it, you can't compare the two situations like because when you lose a dog that has been your companion your friend your your whatever your a family member for a long time and yeah you can get another dog that looks just like it and everything but you know this is real life in fiction yeah in make-believe yeah. it's different it's like Gamora's gone. Oh, okay. No problem. Guess what? We're just going to bring her back. How? But she died. Uh, uh, time, multi-dimension, whatever. She, she, Gamora's back. Okay, great. And, and it's just that simple. So, no, you cannot compare that to a real-life thing like an actual dog that you live with and has a part of your family. Yeah, man. Totally different thing. Totally different thing. All right, what's next? Come on. Sadu says, advice for someone going through a tough breakup. I have some great advice for somebody going through a <laughs> oh, breakup. Oh, dear. <laughs> 
go see a movie at AMC theaters because heartbreak <laughs> feels good here. Where heartbreak feels good. Listen, you're going to wow. hear the same we advice from everybody, <laughs> but, and it's going to sound trite, but it's, it's going to take, once you get a little bit, a little distant from it, you'll realize it's true. It's not that big of a deal. Life will go on and it, it may feel really sucky right this moment. It, it really does. But you're going to realize, like, the amount of times I've looked back to my life when I've had a couple of relationships and realized how awful it felt, I almost, like, want to laugh at myself. It's like, because now I'm on the other side of it. Now I know. So I would always say, honestly, just understand, once you're standing on the pier of what is four months from now and you look back, you're going to feel totally different. You, you totally will. All right. What's next? uh andy or wait is that um, no, sam fisher yeah if sam fisher says over under 30 percent, we get a rob mcclenny cameo in mcclenny mcclenny uh, yeah the other co-owner of the yes, uh, of, of, of rexham um i will go over 30 percent oh not, i think so i'm not gonna say 80 percent again but i'll go over 30 percent. i'll even bet the team's in it in some kind of weird, or some reference yeah there's gonna be something in there yeah They'll, Pro probably something to promote that why team. not all right what's next uh andy says deadpool 3 should do another James Bond, Celine Dion opening credit scene, but with Hugh Jackman performing this song. He totally could, but that, but, but you want the moment that Hugh Jackman arrives to be a pivotal, big moment in the movie. I don't know that you want to waste that on having Hugh sing the opening credit. Unless, of course, they do a pre-title sequence like a Bond movie. And it's a big action then, sequence, and, and but Hugh Jackman gets introduced in oh, that scene. Oh, and Ben sings the Yeah, like song. he's introduced in some monster action scene, and when it, when the smoke is there, then he just turns around and it's like... Well, look out. what just happened in Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness. It started with that big action sequence in the multiverse with them running from the thing, and then the... you know, And they, then they it totally just turns that. into him. Yeah. Can you imagine if, if, if this... If this if, if it, his claws come out and he grabs a microphone with the claws, starts sure. singing and it goes into a that could Daniel work. Kleinman designed. Um, this is the greatest show. <laughs> yeah, I could totally see it. All right. And it's got to be that. It's got to be. He's got to sing Greatest Showman <laughs> as the opening to, to Deadpool 3. That's how you open it. All right. What's next? Or or to duet with Celine Dion. And, and for, that would work too. Real. Attack of the Mushi says, Jackman will do Secret Wars. The door is open. Nah. No, I 100% I, 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 I fully believe 100% believe that this is a one last ride. I really, I really do. I don't think you're going to get him back for multiple films. Because listen, one of the big reasons he said he was retiring from Deadpool or from uh, from from Wolverine is like, I just can't keep doing the things I need to do to look like Wolverine. Yeah, but he doesn't necessarily have to look like that all the yeah, time. Yeah, but he said he was done. He was wrapped. And we always said that we believe him with the one exception that you could do it in a Deadpool because it's Deadpool. All, like you said, all bets are off in Deadpool. I don't believe for a second that we're going to see him back in, in Secret Wars. No. I don't think we're going to see him in this shape. No, either, well, no, again, you, you can but... never see him in this kind of shape again. But, I mean, I would be excited to see him in Secret Wars. But, again, I don't believe they're going to use Secret Wars to... If there's going to be a Wolverine character at all in it, it's going to be the new Wolverine character, and they're going to use that to pump that. I, I And I don't see Hugh Jackman want to come back again. One last ride for a Deadpool movie. They've been setting this up for years. But I really do think that's the end of the ride. But if he is in Secret Wars, I'll be happy. I mean, if there's one thing he could be in after this, Secret Wars is the thing. That would be it, yes. But I yeah. just don't think it's going to happen. That's too serious of a movie. Come back as a lark in Deadpool 3, that's one thing. Come back to a, this big, pivotal, serious, like, Avengers 5. Yeah, but I it's not like it. Loki is the most serious of things. And that's multiverse. And that's the time variance authority. It could be crazy. It depends how it's going to go. It depends how it's handled. All right, what's you know? next? Uh, Andy says there should be a loop of Sir Harwin Strong beating Sir Christian Cole. Never since Joffrey from Game of Thrones have I seen a character with such tiny prick energy. Yeah, that I like again. Other than Nate on Ted Lasso, there's no other character on television I want to see die a horrific death more than like Nate. Number one, number two would be this Kristen little bitch. I, I like. I, I want to well, see him he's, die. He's, he, well, he, she spared his life. He's still a little bitch. Anyway, he needs to die. That dude needs to die. All right, what's next? Al Renshaw says, I sensed a disturbance in the force with Deadpool 3 news. You could feel it in the air. You in could the taste it in the water. The world is changed, <laughs> says Galadriel. You could feel it. You could feel it. The energy in the air was just changed, man. It's incredible. All right, what's next? 
Andy B says, I have to say I'm becoming a big fanboy of the good Canadian kid, Ryan Reynolds. Well, listen, full disclosure, Ryan Reynolds provides a lot of the financing that comes into our company. <laughs> Thank you to Mint Mobile. So, I mean, but you know, I have been, I've said a long time before Mint Mobile ever became a sponsor of the John Campus show. Ryan Reynolds is my, my favorite movie star. Um, not that I love every movie that he's in. Red Notice is shit, but <laughs> I, I don't love every single movie, but he is my favorite movie star. And it's for a couple of reasons. One, because he's just so dynamic and charismatic on screen. I just, I just love what he does, but he's also just a legitimately great guy. I remember I was having a conversation with a bunch of pundits we were talking about and the Ezra Miller situation came up and one of the pundits, like you guys, you would know all the people I was talking to. And we were all, we're on this chat together. And one of the pundits goes, I mean, like, goddamn, why can't it just be more like Ryan Reynolds? Where the only time he's ever in the news is because he gave some kid in the hospital a horse. <laughs> like, and that that's the thing. And so I, I, I remember I wrote to Ryan Reynolds once and I said, listen, this is going to sound really strange coming from a fucking nobody YouTuber. But I am so proud of you. As a Canadian, I'm so proud of the way he conducts himself, the way he handles his celebrity, the way he gives back. Like this dude is involved in more charities you can shake a stick at. He constantly is trying to give back. Um, it couldn't be prouder of him as a Canadian. He's my favorite movie star. And I love the fact that he gives me so much money. I love that. It's, it's, that's also makes me a very big, but I was a big fan of his before that anyway. All right, what's next? John, can you do me a favor and say Red Notice is shit again, please? <laughs> Red Notice is shit. I'll say <laughs> I love that movie, though. <laughs> Just Friends. It's good. I freaking love that movie. It's All good. Right, what's next? Jonathan uh, Vigoa says, sent member chat an hour before the John Campy show, and it never showed. Um, member chat. Well, uh, I, I, then don't send it an hour before the show starts. We don't, we don't open up chats. An hour before the show starts, so yeah, I'm that not, could be why. Yeah, that might be why. So yeah, generally don't send in any chats before the show starts. All right, what's next? Because we won't see him. ENS says Deadpool three on September sixth, twenty twenty four. Well, that's going to be a great birthday gift for me. Happy Laugh birthday to all of us, Ian. All of us together can celebrate the birthday. We are this years old when Deadpool three <laughs> came out with Hugh Jackman returning as Wolverine. Love it's it. It's going to be extra special for you, Ian. All right, what's next? Uh, Samuel Shin says, finally, a proper Deadpool versus Wolvie film film. I don't count X-Men Origins. Also, since it's in the MCU, I suspect a couple of Avenger level cameos. Can't see Ryan not capitalizing on that. I'm not convinced it's MCU proper. I'm not either. I think that that's where they're going to deposit him at the end of the movie. Per yeah, perhaps. Yeah, I look, I'm not I'm not coming out and definitively saying I 100 percent believe it's not. I'm just saying I'm not convinced it is. I think we got a long way to go. I think it's a pretty big assumption. And I'm not even sure it's Deadpool versus Wolverine. Although uh, they got to have at least one. Yeah, yeah. Right? They got to have a brawl. Oh, I hope yeah. so. And I hope Deadpool is wearing the Christmas sweater that he was wearing in that picture with Jake Gyllenhaal. And I, I want to see that. I think they are going to lean into the multiverse of it all because they have to. They have to. It's the middle of the multiverse saga. That, and 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 that'll be the... What will happen is, is, you know what? The end of the movie, to give it poignancy... This is Here's my prediction. The end of the movie, they will be separated, and Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, not Ryan Reynolds, but Deadpool himself, will know that he will never see Wolverine again, right? Because that universe door has closed, and he, he's in the MCU proper after that. Again, I still think they should keep Deadpool separate from the MCU proper. I do too, but, but I also 100 percent believe that's not what's going to happen. They're going to put him in the MCU proper, especially if they deposit him, you know, at the end. And it could I, there's going to be that poignant moment where they they see each other for the last time. Yeah, and they'll they'll play Celine Dion. <laughs> That's All right, they'll do it. What's next? My comic planet says I am beyond excited about this news about Wolverine, but it begs the question: Could they have not announced this at D twenty three? Dude, from your mouth to God's ears, I, I I mean, I just I don't understand. Now, okay, maybe somebody could say, well, you know, they they knew that this news was so big that they didn't want it to overshadow all the other news. That's what D23 is supposed to be. Like, you, you put this whole big event together where it's like, everybody, everybody, world, turn your eyes on, on, on to Anaheim, California for D23. This is where you got to be, blah, 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 blah. And you put out this fart 
<laughs> which is what it was. It well, was a giant fart compared to the D23 that came out what, before. What's, what I find so funny kind of about all this is we were talking about, they're going to be dropping bombs. This oh, is it. Dude, I was, I, was, I was so counting on them doing that just because of the previous D23. The previous D23, it was big announcement after big announcement after big announcement. Literally. Literally. And not this, a single at the Lucasfilm Marvel panel, not a single announcement. It was all here's something about a project you already know about. Yeah. Here's another little song. Here's a look at a movie you already know is coming out. The previous D23 is guess what, guys? Moon Knight's coming. What? Guess what, guys? Uh, you McGregor is coming back as Obi Wan. What? Guess what, guys? Moon Knight is coming. What? I mean, it was that. It was bomb after bomb after bomb. And then at D23, it was just a fart in the wind. And this, this could have changed the entire per, per, uh, complexion of that. Could have changed the entire complexion but of But you know what? We're here to do this live chat a half an hour after this news dropped. Damn right. Rather than not getting into a, a hall. Damn right. <laughs> so Damn right. It's better for us. It's better for you. It's better for them. All right. What's next? Uh, Jay Taylor says, hey, John and Rob, do you think Hugh will be a cameo or do you think it will be a more substantial part, maybe a buddy type film? It's absolutely going to... I expect this to be Lethal Weapon, Riggs and Murtaugh, something like that. You cannot... Two years out from when, it, from the, when the movie debuts, announce the movie like this and then have it be a cameo. You can't do that. You will kill and destroy so much goodwill. It's, it's almost incalculable. Like, you, you can't come out of the gates. Like, listen, if they announced Deadpool today, mention nothing about Hugh Jackman, all right? Nothing about Hugh Jackman. They announced Deadpool 3, we've got a release date, boom. They make a big announcement. And then, like, maybe a year before the movie comes out, and we, they've already started filming the movie, then the news comes out. By the way, Hugh Jackman will be appearing in this movie, too. Then that opens the door that you could have him as a, a glorified cameo. But if you're going to come out of the gate with the only people on screen announcing this movie, and even though he's only in the background, the only two people on screen announcing this movie is Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. And then you have him just be a cameo. That would be a monumental mistake, and I cannot believe they would do that. Dude, no, he's a main character. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind. I'll put $100 down with anybody right now. Yeah, completely agree. Main character. Completely. Crazy about this lineup now with that date. Nobody can hear you, by the way, Jonathan. Yeah. It's, uh, it's cap it's, um, What's that? Captain America, right, is May. Two months later is thunderbolts two months later is deadpool 3 and then two months later is fantastic four well okay the fact that this is now coming like two months before fantastic that opens up a lot of other possibilities uh, yeah too. and that makes for a very interesting 2024 very interesting 2024 thanks for pointing that out jonathan all right what's next john wicked says just want to ask john where did you train on a I don't understand. Is that is that a is that a um I don't know. Is that a reference to something? Where did you train on a uh, uh like 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 personal training? I don't I don't know. It might be Profession a reference to something. Training? I, like school training? I don't know. Sorry, I don't know what you're talking Maybe about. Like you did the MMA stuff. I mean, well, I started when I was in Canada. When I moved to the US, the very first place I started going to was Randy Couture and Boz Lerman's Legends MMA. So I trained there. Uh, for a while. And then eventually I moved, when I moved, when Ann and I moved away, I started training at the UFC gym and I got hooked up with a professional MMA fighter there, um, as my personal trainer and stuff like that. So th that's been that, but I, but if you're talking about schooling, uh, that was all done in Canada. I did all my, my training and everything there and stuff like that. If you're talking about online training, I just kind of taught myself like most online guys. So anyway, yeah. All right. What's next? Uh, Samuel Shin, yeah, Samuel Shin says, I think it's possible Hugh could return just a couple more times and call it quits since it's the multiverse, like for Secret Wars, perhaps. Okay, this is where the fan community gets themselves in trouble. Uh, me too. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and I'm a, I, I include all of us in this room as a part of the fan community. This is where we get ourselves in trouble. Something is given, then we try to take it a mile. It's like, yay, Hugh Jackman's back. Let's just celebrate that instead of, okay, now he's going to be back in Secret Wars and then he'll be in the first X-Men movie that they're going to use to introduce everything. Oh, and then guess what else? Then he can pop up over here. And then every like, hey, let's, I think there was a reason 
that they specifically worded in the video where he didn't just say, because Ryan Reynolds could say, hey, Hugh, you want to come back as Wolverine? But they didn't. They specifically used the wording, you want to play Wolverine one more time. And I think that was put in there specifically as a guard for us as the fan community oh, yeah. to not start running wild with this. So I really do believe it is one last ride. This is the cowboy coming back. This is the sheriff for one last rodeo. It's one last ride. So again, I'm not going to say it's impossible to come, come back in Secret Wars, but I think it is one last ride. All right, what's next? All right, so I checked the live chat. The previous question from John Wicked was, uh, where did you train on a... The correct answer is farm. It was a Man of Steel reference. Oh, oh, that's right. Because because uh, General Zod is like, I don't know this. where did you train? All right. On a farm? Yeah, okay. Okay, now I get it. It's like, look, I don't understand the question. Yeah, well, it's, right, it's, perfect. it's hard when someone quotes movies. You're not thinking in those terms. You're trying to think like... Yeah, I'm thinking it was something else. Yeah, but of course, but by the way, I literally, we have the Campier Ranch up in, up in, up right. in Canada. So, so you did train yeah, on a farm. I kind of did train on a farm. All right, what's next? Uh, McCory213 says, hey, guys, couldn't Namor's mutant ability be his feet wings? You could, but that would be dumb. I, I think it's all part of, but it's all part of his physique, whatever that is. He's a mutant that can breathe underwater. Yeah, I, I think the feet wings, it's one of those examples of something that works perfectly great on a page but I don't know if it translates well onto yeah. a screen. I, do, are you expecting to see the feet wings? No. Yeah. It ain't possible. No, it might be. But I, I'm not going to expect I to mean, see I mean, you can have web feet, you know? Yeah. In the trailer, the feet Yeah, wings, I think we saw in the when trailer. When he's swimming, like, and they're they're, metal. the baby's coming out, remember? That's the first thing that we noticed was, oh, he has the wings on his feet. But was that something he was wearing? Yeah, but is that organic? He, that's the thing. Oh, we'll see. oh okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All right, what's next? Uh, Belted Earth 3 says, I think I need to change from the red pants to the brown pants to hide my excitement after seeing this announcement. I'm so excited. I can't wait. It's like some people are going to be tempted to think I'm being, I'm using hyperbole when I say this is <laughs> my number one or number two favorite day I've ever had in this career. <laughs> it, it's the day they announced that Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds are going to be Deadpool and Wolverine in a movie together. Um, I, I am beside myself and it's not that Deadpool is my favorite film franchise of all time. No, that Wolverine is my favorite character of all time. But when you look at the history, it, it's, it's a conglomeration of a whole bunch of different factors about these two being just brilliant characters. They are two of the three. I say there are three characters who were born to play their roles in comic book movies. That's, uh, Robert Downey Jr. That that's Ryan Reynolds and that's Hugh Jackman. So two out of those three are going to be coming together to do it. The fact that they've had this years long faux uh, feud, which I believe this is this is a very long term plan. I think I think they've known for years oh, yeah. they were going to do this together. Yeah. And so it's like all of that together makes this like the most fun news I think I've ever reported doing this as a career. I, like, yeah. I I'm I'm beside myself. I can't believe it. All right, what's next? Uh, 156 Impulse says, so Hugh will be Wolverine for 24 years. Dear heavens. Dear heavens. Good call. X-Men 1 right there. Now we're getting into Patrick Stewart playing Jean-Luc Picard. Kind of territory. Yeah. Like, like just think about it. Look, okay, look at that image. Now bring up that one you had a little while ago. Uh, of Hugh Jackman. Not in this the, one? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, the other one, if you... No, the other the one where he's... Uh, that's it. Look at the difference between yeah. that. Now go back to, to X-Men 1. Doughboy. Yeah, Sorry, in X-Men 1, we all thought he looked like he was in incredible shape. Do you still have that image? Yeah. yeah. We all thought greens. he was in great shape, but dear heavens. <laughs> athletic Greens does wonders. It's, it's all <laughs> Athletic Greens. Crazy. God. All right. What's next? Uh... Ira Benson says, if those rumored 2025 contractual issues are true, then Feige must be trying to round up the OG Fox X-Men for Secret Wars for their last appearance before we get the new MCU X-Men iteration. Thoughts? I, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about that whole contractual too. situation. I, I honestly, honestly, I don't think that's a part of it. I don't think Secret Wars, because remember, the, he was, Secret Wars was a part of what he was already charting out prior to him even knowing that Marvel was going to be getting the X-Men. 
I, I mean, that's Rob for the past four years, like we have been trying to explain to to audiences and stuff like that. Like, cause for every new Marvel project the last four years, it's been Wolverine's going to show up in this one. The X Men are going to show up in this one. Blah blah blah. And we've had to remind everybody that, that Kevin Feige said, "Look, I didn't even know this was happening, and by the time I knew this was happening, I had had the next five years charted out, and we're not going to make a lot of big changes." Now they've done little things, Ms. Marvel, right? We we Namor, so they can do stuff like that. But I. I don't think that we're going to see that. Um, and this is probably the reason why we don't have a Fantastic Four movie already is because when they had Secret Wars, when he had that kind of planned out and charted out at least, I'm sure he didn't have a script or anything. Done, right. It probably wasn't going to be a X-Men centric sort of thing. So, but listen, that's in 2025. That, that means he's, that's outside of the five-year range of when he knew he was getting the Fox characters. Yeah, well course. outside the five-year range. So you never know what's possible. Plus, I don't believe, I mean, people make contracts based on films. Like, we contract, we're going to contract you for three more movies because yeah. we're going to make a trilogy. It's not based on a year. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, Although they, they, they can put terms. Yeah, they can put terms to say yeah. up to this year. But I, I still just, I, that whole business, I've never read anything that convinced me of those contract things. I've never read. At, at least not that they've been interpreted properly. I, I think there's a baseline issue there, but I, I don't know that it's being interpreted properly. Yeah, me neither. All right, what's next? Uh, Jordan Patterson says, how does this affect X-Men in the MCU? Does this mean they're in another universe in the multiverse? How has even go back to when Deadpool was just in the Fox verse. Right. It didn't affect the X-Men films at all. It, it was kind of its own self-contained thing. And I really am buying into Rob's theory here that when we start this movie, and again, we've got two years to change our minds, but I, I'm on side with Rob's theory here that when we start this movie, Deadpool is still in that pocket. Yeah. Right. He was still in Fox like the other x-men films but it wasn't really part of the x-men universe like sure they opened the door and there were the x-men in there but that was a gag right so i'm really buying into rob's theory that this will start with him still in that pocket universe and will end with him in the mcu well theoretically that pocket universe is also where wolverine is because if you want it was even a pocket separated from well, that pocket yes. right i mean it it's it, yes i mean it's however that's going to work i mean you know so i i honestly i think it will affect the X-Men the same way that it used to affect the X-Men. Not at all. I don't think it will at all. All right, what's next? Jay Master says, Rob, last night the Seattle Kraken won their first preseason game at Climate Pledge Arena, beating and shutting down the Edmonton Oilers three to nothing at home. Congratulations to the Kraken. I always love when a new NHL team uh, pops up. Do you course, know who bought, who's one of the owners of the Kraken? I do not. Jerry Bruckheimer. Really? Yep. I did not know that. Yes, That's interesting. Yep. Um, again, but preseason means nothing. I don't even watch preseason football, hockey, anything. Even when the Leafs were playing the other night, I didn't watch it because who cares preseason? But still, I just think that I, I love the name, man. I love the Seattle Kraken. I, I like great, the name too. I gotta it's, say, it's great. I like it a lot. All right, what's next? Unleash. Hmm. Yeah, that's not uh, that's not a question at all. <laughs> that's not one. Did we accidentally lose it? Uh, well, if you talk amongst yourself, I'll bring it up real quick. I'll talk well, amongst yourself. I'll tell you what. Um, do we have uh, another one of our sponsor spots ready? Because we've gone long enough that we can go to another one of our sponsor spots. Yeah, we can go. All right. And let's go to this. Let's thank another sponsor of our channel, our friends over at Stamps.com. We want to take a second and thank a sponsor of this video, Stamps.com. Guys, I know it feels early, but Christmas really is right around the corner. And if you've got a lot of stuff to send to family this year, you got to start thinking ahead. And if you're a small business owner, you know how important it is to be ready for the insane holiday season. Stamps.com has everything you need to make your life a whole lot easier. It's the 24-7 post office that you can access from anywhere. No lines, no traffic, no hassle. Get access to the USPS and UPS services that you need to run your business right from your computer. Protect your margins with major discounts from USPS and UPS rates up to 86% off. All you need is a computer and a printer. We all know that rates are always changing, but with Stamps.com's switch and save feature, you can easily compare carriers and rates so you know that you're getting the best deal every single time. And if you're running an online store, Stamps.com works seamlessly with all the major shopping carts and marketplaces. So get ahead of the holiday season chaos this year get started with stamps.com today sign up with the promo code campia for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus 
free postage, and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts required. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code CAMPIA. Well, welcome to the show already in progress. Thanks to our <laughs> friends at stamps.com. What's next? <laughs> uh, Josh Becker says, I want to rewatch Logan right now. Well, don't we all? I mean, any time to rewatch Logan is a good time. What a great film it is. Yeah, don't expect, though, to see a lot of connections. <laughs> don't don't yeah. start looking for hints in Logan about what could be involved in Deadpool 3. But listen, Again, any excuse to watch, I, I, I'll say it again, I said at the beginning of the show, it, it is a top three greatest comic book movie ever made, I think. It, it's just one of the most oh, yeah. remarkable. You often talk, Rob, about comic book films that transcend the genre. This is one of the few that really, really does. Oh, I, I agree. I mean, it is it is like a neo-Western. It's It works so well. I mean, it, 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 if you didn't know, if, you, if someone didn't know what the X-Men were or superheroes were, I think you could set them down and have them watch that movie. Yep, and be totally moved by it. Uh, absolutely. All right, what's 100%. next? 100%. Uh, uh, Bradley Frey says, I should have worn the white pants after this news. <laughs> I Listen, I tell you what, man, this... Like everybody else, when the news first dropped, it's like, okay, this is a joke. And then we're watching Ryan announce, it's like, okay, it's still a joke. And then, you know, then the variety things drops. It's like, oh my God. I love it because we were all watching it together. Yes. And we're all going, what is this? And we were waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. Right? And it's like, this, this is actually real. No, it was so great. That was great. So great. All right, what's next? Uh, Al Renshaw says, Feige is going to make all the money with Deadpool 3. <laughs> I'll tell you what, listen. Deadpool was never a billion dollar franchise uh, in the sense that the individual movies do not make a billion dollars. It's R rated. It's all that kind of stuff. But this movie will become the highest grossing R rated film of all time. Oh, I guarantee it. Yeah. Not, not just the highest grossing R rated comic book. Movie. This will become no. the highest grossing R rated film of all time. 100%. It's not going to be a $2 billion film, no. but it's going to make a lot. If of it's money. good, it could, I could see it doing 1.5. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be good. Yeah. It's going to be good. It's, it's going to be good. All right. What's next? Abraham Marie's says, this brightened my day instantly. Hughes Wolverine holds a special place in my heart as a Marvel character that became a favorite since I was a kid. Yeah. And, you know, I, I said a little bit earlier that reminds me that, you know, and this is going to be rated R. We never really had a chance to see Wolverine. Had just, well, of course, there was Logan. Of course, there right. was Logan. But to see it in this kind of an environment, it's going to be really special. And you're right. Hugh Jackman, I mean, listen, we don't get to say this about a lot of guys. We grew up watching Hugh Jackman play Wolverine. Right. Right? I mean, I wasn't a child when he started. I wasn't a kid when he started playing Wolverine, but I was a lot younger than I am now. And like, so in many ways, we all kind of grew up with him playing Wolverine. And he's still one of the finest performers in the world. T to see him and Ryan Reynolds do this together, too, like the, the, it, this couldn't be more special. Right. This could not be more special than this. So I'm, I'm super excited about that, too. All right, what's next? Uh, Ismail Montoya, how are you doing, man? Uh, hey, guys, Rob, what if Laris is a warg and, and is incarnating the rat that is always showing up in House of the Dragon? Just a theory, thanks. Not a bad theory, but I don't think that's true. No, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think, think he's all. warging into a rat. No. I, I think I, there's just rats around. I think he is the new middle finger, but that like Tyrion Lannister in the original show, people... Don't take him seriously when they look at him because of his physical limitations. Yes. And he uses that to his advantage. Absolutely. All right, what's next? But he's a lot more ruthless than Tyrion. Yeah. Tyrion has a heart. Magic K, Canada must have been too much good kids that they can have Black Adam early uh, early screening. Your thoughts? Wait. Canada must have too much good kids that they can have a Black Adam early screening. Your thoughts? Are they getting a Black Adam early screening? I've heard nothing about that. Well, if if I find out Canada is getting an early screening, I'm moving up my plans for a visit home. <laughs> uh, so I will go up there and check that out. But I have heard nothing about that so far. If it is, maybe it'll be a topic on the show tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks for, for, for putting it on the radar, though. Love to hear some reviews. All right. What's next? Uh, Attack of the Mushi says, what percentage that Hugh dons the blue and yellow finally? I ain't going to say zero. I think it's a mistake to do it, but... I'll go 20%. If it's But if it's a, a version that's a good version of that sure, costume. But, but I mean... When people say that, they mean the classic yeah, I know. Wolverine. I, I can only go as high as 20%. And I think that's being generous. I just think, you know, like we saw in, in for Captain America, the first Avenger, when Captain America goes on the USO tour and he's wearing yeah. it. Uh, you, can't, 
you can't make something that looks exactly like it looks in a comic book because in the real world things don't look that way there are some comic book Close. costume designs that that do transfer well close yeah yeah but uh, but but many of them i don't. mean thor's costume has always looked yep you know but they've done they've done the great they've used great materials and great design so it can be done yeah i agree i i just don't know that the wolverine the classic look yeah, of the it wolverine really depends on the actual colors yeah i agree it's all right what's next too um uh, uh josh becker says will wolverine have the comic accurate suit uh, I don't uh, think so. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be comic accurate because it a comic accurate suit. I mean, that's that could be cool depending on how it looks, but that's not comic accurate. That's that's reminiscent of the comic books, but I can't see that working in in live action. Why would you? Okay, put that on your here's face? a scene that I could see happening in Deadpool three. Outfit change room montage. He's like, all right, but if we're going to go into battle, you can't be wearing what you're wearing. He's wearing some regular street clothes. Well, what do I got to do? And then they do the wardrobe changing montage. He steps in, and one of the outfits he steps uh, out of the change room in is that totally classic buy it. outfit. I can totally see that I can happen. totally see them doing yep. that. Right now, Ryan Reynolds is watching this. Is going, shit, that is in the script. Now we got to take it out. <laughs> all right, what's next? Uh, Eric Benson says, hot toy bet, Rob and John. But what do we, what do we I don't bet, know what we on? bet on? I mean, you know, bet on Secret Wars to find out in twenty. I mean, that's that's the only thing that I think we have a real disagreement on here. Yeah, I think we're pretty much on the same page on everything else. Yeah, but the, the thing is, it's not really fair because saying something now is just based on total speculation as opposed to any kind of information. Well, that's what the best bets are, Ron. Right? I'm saying yes, you know, and I'm saying no. By the yeah. time, but by the way, if we bet on a hot toy in twenty twenty five, it wouldn't come out till twenty twenty seven. Sure. I mean, it would have to be one of those things where we agreed upon that it would have to be a hot toy that you can get right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll There's see. always one of those. All right, what's next? Uh, Norm Jr. 100 says, with the recent casting news and the hype surrounding the movie, will the third time be the charm? Will Deadpool 3 be the second R-rated to join the billion-dollar club after Joker? Well, yes. I mean, yeah. 100%. It's going to outgross Joker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll outgross Joker easy. Listen, I think... Deadpool just being in the MCU coming out, I think Deadpool 3 was going to be a billion dollar film anyway. Adding into that, the most electrifying news I have ever had the pleasure of covering in the movie industry that Hugh Jackman is coming back for one more ride to finally do it with Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool and Wolverine. We're talking 1.5. You know, Mint Mobile should sponsor a Ryan Reynolds guest spot on the John Campy show where we can ask him about these very things. You know, here's the thing. Um, Maybe for the American Thanksgiving. I think Ryan Reynolds has more money than he has time. Uh, and so I don't, like I remember when we announced the big the big sponsorship of Mint Mobile, they've become our, our number one major sponsor, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of people ask, does this mean that Ryan Reynolds can, can come and be on the show? I, and, and I said, don't don't expect that. Don't <laughs> don't count on that ever happening. Because the dude, again, more money than they have time. Time is something that is a very, very tight. And you're talking about a dude with children, um, w with children. And he's a dad. He's a father on top of everything else he's doing. So I, I don't expect that you will ever see Ryan Reynolds on the show. Maybe on the Mint Mobile question of the day, he'll answer our questions. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> All right. Just maybe. Maybe. Just maybe. <laughs> Josh Cohn says, the only thing I would love now is Chris Evans' cap somehow getting tangled in with these two when he's returning Infinity Stones throughout the multiverse. I'm telling you, Chris Evans is coming back. I just don't know when. Could be a couple of years. Could be whatever. Look, but I don't expect it to be in there. For this movie, all bets are off. That's true. It wouldn't surprise me if they're going to give you all the characters. I don't know what's going to happen. This movie's going to be a blowout of epic proportions, but it's all going to be fun. Yeah, it'll all be done. It's in, not going to be a, some lame ass. It's all going to be well thought out and and good. I agree. All right, what's next? Um, uh, Kyle Ginder says, "Do you think Marvel needs to rethink how they're doing their Disney Plus shows since most of them are falling flat, in my opinion, anyway?" Define most. Like yeah. I, I'm not a huge fan of Loki or Falcon and Winter Soldier, but neither of those shows fell flat. Ms. Marvel is one of the best shows on television as a whole this year. WandaVision was spectacular. Um, so it depends on what you mean by most shows. Look, what, one of the things Rob and I agree on is that Marvel has not really figured out or mastered the half-hour television format. Right. 
that that is clearly not something they're experienced at nor their forte but to say that most of them listen i i didn't like hawkeye i don't like she hulk um but uh, i mean for the most part it's worked for the most part it's worked so uh, yeah I, I don't really know all right what's next uh jordan ellis says he will pull wolverine from the fox movies before he dies some way somehow and then I wouldn't be surprised that we have a new Wolverine by the end. I do not believe at all that they're going to do something as serious as introducing the new MCU Wolverine in Deadpool 3. I, I agree. I don't see that. I think the movie's going to end with the end of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine in some way, shape, or form. But I think he's still going to come back for Secret Wars. <laughs> and I still don't. All right. What's next? <laughs> Jay Master. Jay Master. Says, what are your thoughts on James Earl Jones retiring from the voice of Vader and sign over the rights to Disney? of the voice of Vader to use AI tech going forward of James wanting to keep Vader's voice alive. I think it's fantastic. And, you know, listen, James Earl Jones has served the world of movie fans for over 40 years. He has, he has served us. Bring, oh, he's been a long, long, that's just Star Wars. I mean, and I'm talking years. about, I'm specifically talking about as the voice of Darth Vader, yeah. bringing the most iconic movie villain in the history of film to life and whatever. And he has done it for so long. And it's great that he's stepping back. And listen, the fact that he even got to profit a little by saying, by saying, yeah, use modulation to use, still use my voice, but it can't be me doing it anymore. Great for him. Uh, I think it's a great move all around. And uh, thank you, James Earl Jones, for for giving us the most iconic movie villain in the history. I also think it sets a really good precedent moving forward because I think it's not just going to be voice. I think it's going to be everyone's entire likeness. That eventually, you know, going forward 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, AI and deep fakes and all that, you'll be able to license your image before you die for your family or your next of kin or whatever and get paid for it. Or like you can even talk about it can go more than that. Let's say 15 years from now, um, Marvel has an idea that Wolverine from 2008 comes into this whatever thing. They can go to Hugh Jack and say, well, we can't have you play the role, but Hugh, can we pay you and license your image for this sort of thing? So it does open the door for a lot of possibilities. I agree. Later. I, I think it's a good thing. For All right. What's next? Is this uh, Josh Benang says over under 25% Hugh in the X-Force costume as a joke. I don't know what we mean. I, I think Hugh Jackman as a member of X-Force. Did X-Force have a p particular uniform well, i can't they, remember they, as they, they were jumping out the plane yeah i mean there's all, but in the comics there's various x-force yeah uniforms. so i can't think of what the x-force one looked like right. specifically off the top of my head i mean i don't know all right what's next all i think all bets are off all bets are off uh k the specialist says idea deadpool shenanigans happen he's on the run bids a farewell to the fox x-men a magic ring portal opens up and he jumps through entering the mcu i mean listen i i think we're in um agreement here that this movie will end with deadpool being in the proper mcu yes. i don't think it takes place in the proper mcu but that's probably where it ends uh you know some kind but remember the sling ring doesn't move in between dimensions the sling ring just moves you in a physical space so i don't know if it'll be a sling ring but something like that i, I mean i think that seems to make sense i mean listen we are literally an hour into this news <laughs> so we've got two years to speculate about this but right now that seems to make sense to me. Yeah, I think this movie's going to be some kind of a quest film and the multiverse is going to play a part. And at the end, the inevitable will happen. Wolverine will be gone and our our Deadpool will be in the MCU. All right, somehow. what's next? Uh, Andy B says, John is excited about Deadpool 3 news. So am I. The problem for me is that it's going up to 11 p.m. here in the UK and I should be getting ready for bed. That's me up to 3 a.m. now. I mean, listen, there are certain things worth staying awake for. Hugh Jackman joining Ryan Reynolds as Wolverine and Deadpool. This is something you stay awake for. That is correct. And then you call in sick to work the next day. Say, I just can't be there. We are celebrating the fact that Hugh Jackman is coming back as Wolverine. I'm telling you. In a Ryan Reynolds Deadpool movie. And you got to visit all your favorite websites and make comments. And talk about how excited you are. That's yeah. what you do tomorrow. You hang I, out. I'm just looking forward to seeing who out there is going to try to spin this negatively. <laughs> because, like, And listen, again, this is a movie. Any movie can go south. This movie might end up being bad. It's hard for me to imagine, but it but it could. We're just talking about our excitement for it right now. Well, and, and I'm also, damn excited. I see that this is two stars, two friends, wielding their power within the industry to create something that everybody wants. Yeah, 
There's no downside to this. Uh, not that we can see at this point. No. No, I agree. This is just joy for everybody. Yeah. All right, what's next? Justice Marshall says, does anybody else remember when they were talking about having Hulk in Deadpool 3? We think that's still happening? Uh, by the way, he said like a $20 super chat, so thank you so much for that. I don't think those were ever real. Right. I mean, I, I mean that was. I think that was a Gus's movie, uh, gas station reviews dot fart kind of thing that went around, and some people bought into it. I don't know that that was ever. I, I've never. I mean, nothing was ever true because they're still developing the story and you know the scripts. Yeah. All right, what's next? Uh, DJ says, could Deadpool three be Deadpool kills the Fox Marvel universe and then he jumps to the MCU at the end of the movie? I mean, look, I think that's a one joke idea. I think they're actually... It's a what-if animated idea, yes. not not Deadpool 3. I think that they're actually going to have... I mean, there's one thing about... Like, even when... De Deadpool 1 is actually a really good movie. It's terrific. With all the Deadpool-ness of it all, it still is a really great film. Yes. And, uh, and, and I think that Deadpool 3, it's not just going to be a goof. I think it's going to be a legitimately great movie, just like the first two were. And I think there's going to be something going on. I think it's going to actually end fairly poignantly. So the question is, will Disney bring back Gina Carano in her role from Deadpool 1? I think we all know the answer to that. Sorry, I'm just being a shit disturber now. But would, uh, <laughs> would Ryan Reynolds? No. All right, what's next? Uh, Mo Tossum says, Battle of the R-rated box offices in 2024, Joker 2 and Deadpool 3. Who will win? What do you think? Uh, Deadpool 3. Yeah. Uh, it's. I mean, look, Joker might be great. Joker and Harley Quinn and all that. But I think that you've got 24 years of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. And you don't have that many years of Harley and Joker combined. This is a this is a movie that multi-generations are going to tune out for or turn out for and be excited well it's also just like look if you even just look at the nature of the first joker movie which i love i love the first joker movie i absolutely do but you know somebody asked on the show earlier today they were asking um do we think that andor can hit the viewership numbers of mandalorian and we had said no not because andor can't be a better show than mandalorian but mandalorian has that popcorn fun right yeah, yeah. It, it'll appeal to more people right I just think Deadpool is more appealing to to is appealing to a wider base of people than say like a Joker will be. A hundred percent, I agree with you. A hundred percent. Joker is not exactly a pleasant movie to sit through. No, no, it's not a fun movie. Right. To sit through. I, I love mean, it. I, I loved it it's too. It's amazing. But I, I, it wasn't me like, boy, I got to see that again. Yeah. All right. What's next? Uh, what? Uh, Santez Henderson says, I didn't think this would happen due to how Logan ended and Jackman being happy with it. But I guess he's in the mood for a little bit of fun. Again, we've always said we never think he's actually going to come back and be Wolverine again, with the one possible exception of it being a Deadpool movie, because that that has a lot of asterisks you can put beside it. And even though I, and I think many, many of you always kind of expected that we would see Hugh Jackman pop up in a Deadpool movie, it's not until it becomes real. And now it's real, and it feels so good. Plus, you know, you can't underestimate what it's like for people like Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds to want to get together and work on a project where they know it's going to be a blast. Yeah, and you know, the whole point of it is just to make people f smile and laugh and yeah. have a great time. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, I can't imagine, and they're going to get paid very well for the opportunity. And there's literally no gloves on. It, it's it's, right. it's R-rated. They've already said you got our full blessing. I remember when the writers of the script came out and said, you know what? So far, Marvel hasn't given us any notes. They haven't said no to a single thing we've wanted to do yet. And I think, John, this might be the first time in history that I'm just as eager to see the marketing for a movie as I am as for I the, am movie to see the movie itself. <laughs> yep. Because we already the marketing blitz began today. That's it. And it's already exciting. All right. What's next? So William Dwan says over under 20%, Lenore makes it to the end of the season. I will go Lenore. Lenore. Under, uh, we're talking about Renera's husband, right? Yes. I, I'm going to go under 20%. 100%. And the reason I think that is because of one line in the last episode. When his sister says to Damon, I miss my brother, and I think you do too. That tells me, that makes him a character that can die that's going to affect multiple other characters on emotional level. So because of that, I'm going to say I'm going to say the chances are pretty good that he dies. Plus, he even said he wants to go fight. Yep. He wants to go to the Stepstones or whatever and fight for his for his 
you know, for he's his a birthright. Warrior. He's, he's a, a warrior. warrior. All right, what's next? Uh, Q Squared says, do you think they will put Hugh Jackman in the yellow costume for Deadpool 3, considering how wacky the Deadpool films are? It might work. I still don't think so. I, if it is, I think it'll be in a gag like a wardrobe changing montage. Yeah. But I, I don't think they'll seriously have him in that, and that'll be his costume for the Yeah, movie. not that. Yeah. But yeah. you never know. You, you never know. I'm, I'm just, listen, again, we're an hour and a half into this news. Like, ask me again in 18 months. I might have a completely different answer at that totally. point. All right, what's next? Richard K says, because it's supernatural and a horror, could we get Mahershala Ali Blade in Werewolf by Night, even if we don't see him fight Werewolf or Man-Thing, at least see Ali as a uh, blade in costume i i don't think so because people would have mentioned that already well not only would people have mentioned that but one of the things we're hearing from everybody who's seen it is that this is a very self-contained thing yeah. i don't think you should expect to see wider connections to the bigger mcu in this so i'm, I'm gonna guess probably no i mean listen if you had asked me that a year ago saying they're gonna do a off by night do you think blade could be in it we'd probably went well yeah that could probably work but from everything we're hearing there's no real wider connection to the bigger mcu yeah all right what's next uh what do you think about the woman king still haven't seen it i haven't either but i want to see it That's i had cool. i had my chance to see it and we we didn't see it the time that we again i had i'd been invited to see a, an early screening of a long time ago but i couldn't go and then the weekend it came out was a completely packed weekend for us and i still haven't had a chance to see it i've heard nothing but great things about it and that big preview they showed us at CinemaCon looked amazing so i am very excited to see it i just haven't had a chance to see it yet though yeah all right what's i next? agree uh, the Philosopher's Take says, Team, I literally get upset when an ingenious movie premise doesn't live up to its potential. Me too. Bright is that movie for me. Do you guys agree how incredible this modern-day fantasy should have been? Are we talking about the Will Smith movie? Yeah. I was so disappointed with that movie. The, and it was written by Max Landis. Uh, and you had, not only did you have Will Smith, you had Joel Edgerton, who I love Joel Edgerton. But the basic idea of it, like you're going around recognizable los angeles cityscape but you got orcs and everything living up like it was a great premise it really look i just saw a movie last night the greatest beer run ever that is much like that it was a fantastic premise it's it's based on a great story it just wasn't executed and i agree with you to me bright and i'm a big fan of both smith and joel edgerton but that movie to me was a letdown i i agree totally which it is too bad and i was really excited for it and I think they announced they were going to do a sequel anyway, but it never came about. No, no. Um, all right. What's next? Uh, Connor Shipman says, do you think Sony Marvel partnership will continue for <laughs> Spider-Man 4? Any announcements soon for Spider-Man 4? I listen, it's gone back and forth, but at the end of the day, it's this business is business. Marvel and Sony are both making money on these things. And so while I am totally open to the idea of Sony just taking Spider-Man back and going and doing their own thing, because again, Sony has made the two greatest Spider-Man films of all time. They made two Spider-Man films that are better than anything Marvel's made in Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So I'd be totally open to seeing them do that. But it's working. The fans are happy. Sony's happy. Marvel's happy. I, I think it will be one that continues, but I've heard nothing definitive. I mean, one just way look the at the other. box office of Spider Man No Way Home. Of course, they're going to make another one. I mean, they should. Of course, it's going to be in the MCU. It's just but, right. But not... here's the problem people's egos and, and greed can get in the way. Oh, yeah. Marvel may decide, yeah, well, yeah, we'll stay in this deal, but now we want this. And Sony will go, screw that. Or Sony may go, you know, this has been working well for us, but we want an additional 15%, which Marvel goes, well, then it's not worth it to us. Right. So screw you. So. We've seen a lot, not just in the movie business, Rob, you and I have both seen a lot of people that have a very common sense deal in front of them, but one side or the other decides they just want to try to push it as far as they can go and a deal goes to hell. But I, I think we will see this deal. I do too. But if we never did, if we never saw Spider-Man in the MCU again, we got some great movies out of it. Yep. They've left him in a good place. Yep. As far as the MCU is concerned. All right. What's next? Uh, Brazilian dude says, this is the news D23 needed. <laughs> yep. I'm sure this was Disney's plan, but maybe contracts weren't finalized. Imagine the excitement in the room. Oh, yeah, no. Can. Yeah, again, I, I don't buy that for a second that contracts weren't finalized. This is something that's been in, this has been something that's been in stone for a long time. Uh, so I don't buy that whatsoever. And they totally should have announced this at D23. Agreed. 100% they should have done it. All right, what's next? Uh, idiot head <laughs> says, I haven't read any of the Deadpool comics. Any particular story to start with or recommend? Thanks. Oh, well, there's 
twenty five years of Deadpool comics. I mean, it really <laughs> it really depends. I mean, and Deadpool, like any other, has had various iterations. Like he wasn't the fourth wall breaking, like She Hulk. He wasn't breaking the fourth wall when he first started in 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 what New Mutants when he was introduced to New Mutants. So, uh, you know, I can't think of a definitive storyline. There's good. There's there's better runs than others, but. If you want just a good, fun one to do, like that you could literally just, having never read a single one, you just want to jump in. Marvel kills, or uh, Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe yeah. is a really fun one to do. It like, is. It, and that's a great introduction for you right into him right there if you want to try that one. Yeah. All right, what's next? Uh, uh, Rahan University, or Rahan U, says, do you think Wolverine will finally get his comic accurate suit? Hope not, because I think it'll look stupid. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, a comic I mean, adapted you yes. take the basic premise like the color yellow. nothing wrong with the color yellow but like the classic tight spandex bright yellow wing-tipped eyebrow things no well you know what's really interesting that yellow and black suit harks all the way back to when wolverine was introduced in the pages of the hulk and there were different iterations of it. A, yeah he had his brown suit and everything yeah well the brown the, like yeah. this is an adaptation of that brown and black suit but they went back to the, this is the color scheme of that, but it doesn't yeah. look like it looks in the comics. I like that one. I do too. Desk. This is yeah, my that's favorite a, that's of all. That's a great the, outfit for that, him. That's the Days of Future Past suit. I liked it too. I really, I love it. <laughs> all right, what's next? There you go. Uh, Logan Hoyne says, he'll return for Secret Wars. Logan was cemented as one, uh, as one last time for years, and here we are. I do think uh, Secret Wars will be the finale for all legacy characters. But again, like, yeah, but we always said, like, all of you guys, us, all of us have said for the longest time that, yeah, that was the last time, except he totally could come back for a Deadpool because that's a totally different kind of thing. Yep. Um, I really do, again, I will go back to this again and again and again until they announce otherwise. I don't believe it was an accident that they specifically worded the announcement with Ryan Reynolds saying, do you want to play Wolverine one more time? He easily could have said, do you want to play Wolverine again? He could have said that. But I think they wanted to get out ahead of this and they specifically- Did he say one worded, more? Yep, one more time. Didn't say one last time. Well, actually, let me go- uh, Or was it last time? No, it was one more. Let me tell you, yeah. Hey, Hugh, you want to play Wolverine one more time? Not two more times, not four more times, one more time. But not one and, last. And I time. think that was on purpose. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was that was a very, very definitive choice of wording to use, so we don't go crazy like we as I, me included, that we as the fan community often do. Mm. So, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we got a long time between now and Secret Wars. All right, what's next? M uh, MTH says this was the announcement that was missing from D23. Yep. Nevertheless, so hyped to see you back. Yeah, listen, this th here's the funny thing. This announcement did not need D23. Clearly, the world is buzzing right now. This announcement did not need D23. D23 needed this announcement. Right. Yes, yes it did. And and, and th they should have done it there. I again, I'm sure there's a reason but whatever it is, it's a bad reason. They should have done it. I, I agree. <laughs> they should have done it. All right, what's next? Um, Lolly Hamilton says, Hugh Jackman in the Wolverine costume? Well, any costume he wears <laughs> will be a Wolverine yes, costume. True. <laughs> he could be wearing a plaid checkered shirt. That's a Wolverine costume. It is indeed. <laughs> All right, what's next? Uh, Just Don't Cry, Living 16 says, so this video accelerated my think tank session. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you what. I, it's Here's... Here's one of the great things about it. Not just Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, Deadpool. It was a return. This video today was the return of the greatest marketing in movie history, which was the Deadpool marketing. Yeah. This goes all the way back to the first Deadpool. Yeah, it does. They revolutionized how you could market a movie when you've got a star like a Ryan Reynolds. And then they carried that on. I mean, some of the, some of the commercials for Deadpool 2 was some of the funniest shit ever. Um, and this is just marks the beginning of the marketing. Cause you said it, Rob, you, you, you put it so perfectly when you said, this is the first movie I can think of that I'm going to be as excited just to see the marketing campaign as I am, because you're right. The marketing for this movie in and of itself is two years of entertainment. We haven't had, I know. And it started today. It yeah. already was funny. Yeah. It's already amusing. Just the fact that, that Hugh Jack was so nonchalant in the back of his pocket. Yeah, sure, Ryan, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it again. All right, what's next? 
Uh, Marie Seifring just sends in a super chat. Uh, Orlotimi, Orlotimi. Oh, let's this is tough. Let's see. Olorotimi Ajbola. That's a great name. Send in a super chat. Uh, Mitchell Kine, Mitchell Kine sent in a super chat. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate that. Uh, James Argenta says, I think there was no Deadpool news at D23 because they were finalizing Hugh Jackman's contract uh, on a Spider-Man in this film could make it even bigger. No need for that. Uh, like Spider-Man has, this has been, and, and again, I don't buy that Jackman's deal wasn't finalized. That's, that's no. nonsense. I don't believe that at all. Um, but I see, yeah, you could bring in Captain America. You could bring in Spider-Man, but Listen, this has been about Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds have been building this and planting seeds of this for years with their social media stuff. And I, I, you don't, here's the thing. You don't need to put Spider-Man in this. By the way, I'm willing to bet you by the weekend, there's either a Hollywood Reporter article, a Deadline article, or a Variety article explaining how this deal came together. Oh, I, how, no how this whole movie came together. Yeah. And how, how this, it's going to be, because it, this is a big entertainment news story from a business perspective, from a fan perspective, and from an industry perspective. Listen, and I'm not going to be surprised. I'm not, don't, don't say this is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just saying I'm not going to be surprised if we find out, because the Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds stuff didn't really start, the feuding, I don't think really started until after the Fox deal was done. Mm. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if they've been laying the groundwork for this for years. Oh, I, I agree they have, for sure. And like, because when that article eventually comes out, like you're talking about, like Hollywood Reporter deadline, I think we're going to find out this idea first percolated in, you know, 2018 when this and this and this, I wouldn't be surprised about that. Again, I'm not saying that's what what happened. I'm just saying I'm not going to be surprised if we find out that it Yeah, does. because, I mean, as far as the entertainment business is concerned, a lot of people in the entertainment business are just going to be interested in how did this deal come about. Tell us the story. We're interested in it, too. So it's going to appeal to people on multiple levels how this is happening. And the idea that it makes people, there, there is no more exciting entertainment news that's going to happen this week. Not in the movie business. I don't think there's any more inter exciting entertainment news that's going to come out this year. <laughs> I really don't. I, I'm trying to think of what could possibly be announced in the next four months that's bigger than this. I, I can't. I haven't thought of one that's been bigger since Disney bought Lucasfilm. I mean, it's been years. It's, so yeah, it's pretty big. I'm trying to think of what could possibly top this. I'm not really sure. All right, is that it? That's it. Well, guys. That'll do it for this uh, longer version of Open Mic than we normally do. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now that we started this show a half hour after the news came out. Right. We're going to percolate on this a bit. We're, we're absolutely going to talk about this more on the John Campus Show tomorrow. Make sure you guys come back and join us for that. Uh, but a thank you to all of you guys who sent in your thoughts and everything on this. Totally appreciate that. A great deal. I, again, I am just absolutely blown away right now by this incredible news. That to see Hugh Jackman and, and Ryan Reynolds together on screen as Deadpool, who I got right here, and Wolverine, who you've got over there. I know. Uh, on, we should have put the figures together. I like, though, that on your frame that he was there and on my frame this was here. So we yeah, it's, it's, it's very appropriate. We didn't even plan it that way. Um, absolutely incredible. Now all they got to do is have uh, somehow, some way. Uh, Henry Cavill to appear in the movie as well as Superman. If they, I think if Kevin Feige can find a way to pull that off, it's, but no, this is going to be great. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining us. We will again, once again, be back for the John K. Bishop tomorrow. We will talk more about this tomorrow. I hope you will come back and talk about it with us as well. Maybe between now and then we'll get some more tidbits of information. We'll definitely be able to formulate some new theories or some points of view or maybe some perspectives. But anyway, hope to see you tomorrow. So for myself, Mr. Robert Meyer Burnett, uh, guys, thanks so much for being here. And until next time, my friends, bye-bye.